What's up? Joshua Casper here with another Ableton Live video tutorial. This one's going to be on streamlining um, multiple outputs inside of Ableton Live for your contact player. And the reason why I had to figure this out is because I just got a pack from uh, Big Fish Audio that has multi-instruments already set up. I'm not really familiar with contact, but I'm telling you the more I figure out, the more I'm going to start using it for sure. Oh, uh, I had a little bit of difficulty out there on the internet. It can be a strange place, and I could not find a very simple, this is what you got to do, blah, 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 knock it out, couple of minutes, and you're already cooking with multiple outs, multiple instruments inside of uh, contact. So I figured I'd make that video for you. So enough of the chat, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take the contact 16 out player and drop it on a MIDI channel. All right. Um, I'm going to come to my vintage horns right now and to the multis, which is the reason why I'm going to use this for this tutorial is just because it already has multiple instruments set up for me. So I'm just going to wait for this to open real quick. And uh, this Detroit Soul, Soul small section has three different instruments inside of it. Okay. Um, you can also see that it's got this duplicate instrument. So what I'm going to do just for this tutorial is I'm going to delete this one. And let's just come into the instruments and, I don't know, let's take a trombone and add it to that multi just so we get that trombone in there. Pretty sweet, right? Um, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to come to add channels. And right now, nothing will really happen. If I play a MIDI note here, let's just say Control-B, throw it on the C, and then play it. Right now, it's just playing the trumpet. Now, if I wanted it to play the trumpet in the tenor right there, I could switch this to one. And that's pretty cool if you're using these multis the way they're already set up for the Vintage Torrance Pack because they've got them all set up ready to just get, get kind of sound already going. But if you're building your own multi-instrument or if you're just trying to save CPU by throwing a bunch of instruments into contact instead of having multiple instances of contact, um, you have to do things a bit differently. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Just so you can get more control over each one of these instruments, you know, whether or not you've got a drum track in here, a bass uh, instrument in here, or something like that. So this is what you're going to do. I'm going to show you for these three but obviously you can do this for as many as you want. And you might want to set up um, like an 8-track default player where you can save the group. Um, and that way you can have it and just drop it on there and replace and shut off instruments and stuff like that. But I'll show you that at the end of the video. So anyway, what I'm going to do is come down to Add Channels. And I have three here, but I'm going to set it to four because I'm going to be using um, the first channel as my kind of master. The next thing I'm going to do is come over here and I want it to start at KT contact stereo dot one, which is stereo one, like one channel output. I want it to start there, ascending output assignment, and I want to delete what's already there just so we can be have a clean slate. Okay? Hit OK. And what you can see here is it's lit up four stereo output for me. They're already routed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we're not going to be using these auxiliaries for this tutorial. And the next thing I want to do is come out to the output, and I want to hit 2 and change this to 2. Okay? And then I'm going to come to 3 and change this from 1 to 3. And I'm going to come to 4 and change this to 4. Okay? You got it? You want A2, A3, A4, stereo 2, stereo 3, stereo 4. Boom, that's all we got to do right now inside of contact. I'm going to close out of there, and I'm going to come in, delete this MIDI, because this is just going to be a kind of master track, and I'm going to hit uh, Control-Shift-T to get a couple MIDI tracks. I'm going to come into an instrument, an external instrument. I'm going to take that and drop it on this MIDI track. I'm going to take that drop that on the MIDI track, and I'm actually just going to duplicate it again. Uh, duplicate to have three of those because we have three instruments right now. If you had eight instruments, you'd want to do that eight times. And on this first one, I'm going to come in MIDI to contact, and then I'm going to come to two. And then the audio from 
2. Okay, so I want 1, 2, 2. Okay, and if we wanted, we could rename this to contact main. Just to make things, of course I spelled it wrong, right? Just to make things a little uh, a little clearer inside of here. So MIDI 2 contact main um, to the second channel inside of there and, and MIDI audio from that back into this channel. So the MIDI is going to be sent to the contact player and then the audio it produces is going to be sent back to this channel so we can control you know, the sends and stuff like that, the volume, all inside of this channel without having to open uh, the contact player back up, which is going to save a lot of time and CPU, like I was saying before. So the next thing I do is come in here, uh, contact main, three, three, okay? And it's the same deal inside of here, contact main, four, four. So now if I come in, double click to add a um, MIDI clip and just change it right here and just knock in a C note. Cool. And if I come into contact and I open it up, you can see that that is going to be tr uh, playing this trumpet right here, the first instrument. Okay, pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. And I'm going to duplicate that twice. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to move this MIDI note so we can hear um, some different notes, just so we know that each one is doing you know, what it's supposed to. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I'm sorry for that crackling because my CPU is, like I said, I need to do stuff like this to keep the CPU from overheating or jumping out of the computer and beating the crap out of me. But that's that. That is ready to go. Now I can affect each one of these um, if I've got, you know, just this one here and I wanted to send it to some delay. Now I can do that and I've got ultimate control over the volume, I can put MIDI effects on here, I can put audio effects, like everything is ready to go and I just think it's super cool. So the, what we'd want to do now is get rid of this MIDI because it's just silly MIDI. And we'd want to group all of this, group tracks, okay? Okay, so now that that's grouped, what we want to do is save it. But first we want to save it, at, rename it as maybe contact. And if you want to save, like you always use the bass instrument with some strings or drums or something, you'd name it something a little bit more um, obvious. But um, what you could do is I'm going to rename this contact for instrument. Instru. Okay? Contact for instru. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and actually just... Just duplicate this and uh, come into here, and I'm going to change this to five, five, and that's just in case I wanted to add another instrument inside of uh, Contact Player. And let me show you what we do if we wanted to do that. We'd come back into Contact Player, um, minimize this, and um, just drop one more. So let's just say. I've got the choir in here, staccato ensemble. No, that's a little bit too too serious. <laughs> Let me just get the soprano flute in here. Okay, and then once I've done that, I just come in and go five five. All right. Oh, but well, what do I do? I don't have another channel, so I need to add another channel. I want to add one channel, ascending order, and go. Now, boom, I've got that. And what I need to do is come in here and actually come into 6, I believe. No, I can come into 5, 5. Okay? And that says plug in out 9. So the last one was 7, 8, and this one's on 9, 10 now. I hit OK. Hit OK again. And then I come into here and I come down to 5, which is 9, 10, which is what I want. And I come down here to five okay and that would be all five instruments now okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna knock out of there and now these are all good to go and obviously you'd want to come in and rename stuff when if you, if you have a track a track working or whatever but for this just kind of template here what I'm gonna do is come down to user library and I've got some presets or something here but I, I might want to make a folder a new folder and name it contact routing 
that or something like that. Cool. And then I take this and just drag it into there. And now I have this ready to go whenever I need it. Contact for Instru. I just drop it on there, switch out the instruments if I want to use something different. Um, and I think that's just really simple. Now it's kind of a long tutorial, but trust me, it's so much simpler than everything else everybody's doing. It's just ready to go. You're using the instruments. You've got ultimate control. And um, I think uh, this is the best way for me at this moment. So I figured I'd share it with you. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, rate, subscribe, you know what to do. Uh, share the blog. It helps a lot. And I will see you next time. Peace.